Hi, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the next episode of Six Figure Certified Coach. I am so excited to have my friend Kara here with me. Hey, Kara. Hi. Very excited <laughs> to be here, too. Yay. I'm so excited. After this podcast, um, there will also be a podcast of me on Kara's podcast. So we're just really doing all the podcasting today. Yay. Okay. So Kara, you know this, reminding our listeners, the theme of season two is all about your before story. And what I mean by that is people are really obsessed with after stories, right? Like we see what's going on with people on Instagram. We think we know the truth. We see people's lives all over social media or even our friends' lives out in the world. And the reality is that a lot of times we don't know the before story. Even if we think we do, a lot of times the before story is very curated and, you know, let me tell my perfect story of, of how, how I got to where I am today. So we're hoping that you're going to be really open with us and tell us your real after story or your real before story today. And we'll also talk about your after story and what's going on in your life right now. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. I'm in and you'll get the real deal. Yes. Okay. So first of all, tell us the name of your business and what you do and a little bit of background. Sure. Yeah. So um, I am a real estate broker. Um, I am the leader of KCD Real Estate, um, working with Long and Foster. And I also have a podcast called the Soul Inspiring Business Podcast, which we were excited to host you on. So I've pretty much been in real estate since um, I graduated college, which I know is a little bit interesting. So I'm 41, but I've been in real estate for, I guess, close to 20 years now. Wow. That's a long, yeah. so that's a is. long career. It is. I'm, I know. I'm, sometimes people meet me and they're like surprised because a lot of people, it's a second career. But, um, but yeah, I've been in it since the start, really. Yeah, I love that. And so that's so cool to, you know, have clarity around what you want to do right after college. Obviously, that doesn't happen for everyone. And sometimes we just take a shot, right? And it, and it works for us. Yeah. Um, but take us back to like childhood. What did you want to be when you grew up? What were some of your dreams and goals? What was, how did you see yourself in the world, your future self? Yeah. So, you know, as, um, as a little girl, I wasn't one of those people that like knew exactly what they wanted to do when they grew up. Um, what I always really loved doing was like, I, I thought I wanted to actually be a therapist, which of course, real estate in many ways you are. Um, <laughs> but I, um, but I, you know, saw myself as a veterinarian, like I, it was always just like helping people, helping animals, you know, being really just kind of a helper, I guess you could say, um, when I was really little. Um, and then, you know, I went through my parents divorced at age 15. And so I would say in like the the times when most people are questioning like what they want to be or do with their lives in that like high school into college, um, that whole period of time was very messy for me. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't say I had really had any clear direction of what I really wanted. Um, it was more that I felt like this, it went through like a lot of therapy and a lot of kind of like being broken open, I would say. And so I always felt like I was a little bit different from other people. Mm. Like when I was 18, I was really into like spirituality and reading Esther and Abraham, Abraham Hicks books and like things that a lot of my friends weren't really like leaning into. Um, but a lot of it was for me just feeling like, what is the purpose of everything? Like, what am I really here for? And, um, and not really knowing, um, and a lot of self-medicating as well, like partying, you know, college, um, I had an eating disorder through college. So like really just a lot of, um, 
a lot of wounds that were there. And so like the thought of like what I wanted to be, I just took the path in college of finance and international business. That was kind of my career path because I thought, well, you can just kind of do anything with that. And so, you know, I was like, I'll just take this knowing that I can probably translate that into something later. And of course it's super helpful in real estate, of course. So I'm glad that I went that path, but it was not, it was not clear. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And it's like, it's so hard, right? Because I feel like so many of us that are entrepreneur, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs <laughs> or interested in entrepreneurship are mm. very multi-passionate and like you could have gone so many routes, right? Like you're like, I wanted to be a vet and I wanted to be a therapist. And you know, that would have taken you during down many different schooling pathways and, um, you know, going for, for finance, like sort of a, you know, quote unquote, basic, like, you know, applies to a lot of things, like, hopefully, I'll figure out something ended up being a great path for you. And you've been able to use your natural inclinations and your natural skill sets around, you know, helping others and a lot of those softer skills that maybe, you know, came so naturally to you, you didn't really need to go to school for them, but you've been able to infuse them into your business. And from my perspective as an outsider, like that's one of the things that's most unique about you and your business. I feel like real estate is going through this period of, you know, being this like very sexy, like flashy industry with all the TV shows and, um, you know, and I have a few good friends who are real estate agents and it's not really like that, you know, sure. I mean, some days are, and you can make yourself feel like, you know, it's, it's glossy and glam and there are parts that of it that certainly are. But, um, I think that what really stands out about you is that you, you do have a lot of that, like, you know, you're very beautiful. You obviously bring so much joy to your work, but from my perspective, you're like in it for the right reasons. You know, like you actually like helping people and figuring out how to help them make some of the biggest decisions of their lives. So from, but I'm like, this is my analysis of why you're in real estate and why it works for you. What would you say? Like, how, how did that become the, yeah, I'll try that first after college and what has inspired you to stay in it? So it's interesting you say that. So it's, it is a lot of that. It's, it's like the heart of it really is in like the helping guide people through big decisions. Um, and, um, but kind of what, what started me into real estate was really somewhat luck. I was actually working with uh, Disney consumer products and I was doing global finance for them. And, um, I was, uh, that was in it as like a six month internship in college. And that was kind of at the end of my college career. I was living in LA, uh, working in Burbank at their headquarters, Disney headquarters. And, um, you know, it was really, my parents were like, this is amazing. You need to stay with Disney. Like they're such a great company. And, um, and then my friend, actually, one of my really good friends who were still dear friends, she's in real estate and she was working with a builder and she's like, you know, Kara, you'd really love this. You should really explore this. Um, and the reality was I just never really felt like I totally fit in a big company. I mm. felt like um, something kind of called me into, I liked the idea that you could build whatever you wanted in real estate to some degree, um, that like the sky was the limit in terms of income possibilities. And, you know, I thought in, and the experience with Disney was amazing, but it was definitely like, there was a, you could work a lot of hours and you're still getting paid the same amount. And I did see Mm -hmm. a lot of people getting burnt out in their careers there. Um, and so, because it's, it's a very like, you work for a great company, but they work you really, really hard. Um, and I'm not a, ever, I've never been afraid of hard work, but I also felt like I could just do more or have a, a different path if I could kind of create my own destiny. So, so in any case, I, much to my parents' disappointment at the time, um, you know, cause they saw me traveling the world. Like I lived in Paris and I have a minor in French. And so like they, 
had this vision for me. And so I um, started working with the builder and, and um, came back to the DC area and started working with builder at that time. And, you know, it was, um, it was a great experience because they really taught us also like how to sell and sell from the perspective of like, how do you ask really good questions to get the, to the root or heart of what something, somebody really wants and needs. Mm -hmm. So asking like, you know, five layer deep questions to get to the root of what it is that somebody was really looking for. Cause it's in those questions that, and so I liked that, like I liked being able to get to the heart of what was really important to somebody and then helping them make that come true. Um, I will say there was a time in my career. Uh, so I worked in real estate for, from 04 to 08, 08 hit. And I, um, was really bored because I was sitting in a model home and like maybe seeing one person a week. And like my personality really, I love people. I love connecting with people. And so being really, I was very lonely really, and not really fulfilled. And I was also in a relationship that quite frankly was probably one of the best relationships for learning I've ever been through, but also one of the hardest experiences of my life because, um, he moved to California. I moved with him. And I, so I took this like retirement in my like early late twenties, I should say, you know, in Monterey, California. And that, um, was one of those relationships that kind of breaks you open. Mm -hmm. Um, it was a terrible relationship. It was very abusive, um, emotionally abusive. Um, and when I, I, ended it, came back, he came back too. And we still had this like power play. We were kind of dealing with each other. And I'll, I'll tell your listeners one of my lowest, lowest moments. So um, I'm embarrassed to share, but I want people to understand that sometimes what you see now isn't where, you know, this was so far from where I was. So he and I got in this huge fight. Um, I threw a lamp at him. um, And (laughs) I didn't know we were going to go there, Kara. Yeah, keep sorry. going. Sorry, I'll keep going. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we're, and I got driven home with, in a cop car. Like, literally, like, this is, Ooh, you bad know. Bad girl, Kara, here we come. I mean, don't get me mad. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, it was not my finest moment. And I remember crying and being really feeling like my self-esteem was like a pool on the floor, right? Like I was in such a bad place, um, felt very broken. And I remember the the cop like turning around as a female officer and she said, why are you doing this to yourself? And she's like, please don't see him again. Now, of course I did see him again, but Um, it was really humbling and very, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like, you're going through the motions of things, but like, not, you're like, who am I? Like, this isn't who I want to be. Like, this isn't what I want for my life. Like the, the future husband and like father of my children, like, this is why am I doing this to myself? And so through, you know, therapy and other things. Um, I actually thought I wanted to go back and be a therapist. So I took some classes in social work actually at the time as well. Um, and then realized that I really wanted to stay in real estate. I just, um, it kind of changed my perspective of like how I wanted the business to unfold. And a lot of these, I mean, this is a very like synopsis version of the story, right. But, um, through, I guess it probably was about a six month to year time frame. found a lot more wholeness, a lot more peace and a lot more clarity on what I wanted for the future. And then went after that. So, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, thank you for sharing all of that and for being so vulnerable. And I think we've I don't want to say we've all got, I hope not everybody, but I've had my own <laughs> Not everybody's been driven home in a cop car. (laughs) I think we've all had experiences that we feel like really embarrassed about and like really humiliated. And I sort of love that you're like, the cop told me not to see him. And of course I did anyways, because we just keep like 
you know, screwing up our own shit. And it's like, and then you keep being like, why am I doing this? Like what, you know, and this is like part of what we're going to talk about on, on the podcast that I did with you, but like, who am I, who do I actually want to be? And do I like this version of myself? You know? And I think sometimes we have people around us in these phases of life that like, we start to feel like people are distancing themselves from us or, you know, maybe we're sort of a broken record and like our friends aren't picking up our calls enough, as much or like our parents are like, get it together or, you know, and it's like we we get to the point where other people are so tired of our own shit and then we start to get tired of it because eventually you're sort of like left alone with yourself because yeah. the people around you that are watching you self-destruct are like, I'm not watching this anymore. You know, like, I'm not going to be part of this with you. And yeah. then finally, like, we hit our rock bottoms. And sometimes it takes, you know, it's not the moment in the cop car. It's like something after that that, you know, makes us really wake up. So it's really funny you say that. So um, it's true. I mean, a lot of my friendships at the time, like one of my best friends who, uh, we went through a period of time at that time where we really didn't speak because she couldn't engage and kind of like trying to draw me out of this situation anymore. Um, but it was interesting because what finally, <laughs> what finally, after all the things that had kind of unfolded in that relationship, what it finally was is actually it was when Obama was inaugurated, I believe it was like that time period. And we had kind of gone into this time of being back together and my birthday was coming up and we were supposed to go away. He was supposed to take me out and we were having this phone conversation. And I was like, well, are we still going? And he said to me, well, Kara, let me just see how you behave. <laughs> that was it. That was it. I can tell you, I don't know what it was. There had been so many other things, but the words, and it still like brings me to like an, an enraged almost like, can, let me see how you behave and then I'll decide. And I was like, huh, behave? And it it was the click. It was the thing that I finally was like, hell no, I'm done. Yeah. And I remember calling my friend and I said, it finally is over. I actually hung up the phone with him. I didn't say anything at the time. I hung up the phone. I called his friend and I said, can you please get my stuff? I'm done. I never had a conversation with him again. I didn't talk to him again. I didn't. I just asked his friend to meet me to pick up my things because I was done. And wouldn't you know, while I was picking up the things, he came to the coffee shop where I was meeting his roommate with a girl that he'd been with the night before to like parade in front of me. And I was just like, huh, yeah, I'm done. And that was it. Well, and and um, this like psychic that I work with, <laughs> that I've worked with for a lot of years, she always says like, once you see things, you can't mm -hmm. unsee them. Or once you know something, you can't unknow it. Right. And so yeah. you all of a sudden something clicked for you. And then it was like, no turning back, you know? And so I just yeah. want to say to our listeners, like, cause you guys are going to go look at Kara's profile on Instagram and see her picture perfect life and probably, you know, maybe compare or say, oh my gosh, you know, her life looks easier. Whatever we say when we judge other people, which we all do. Come on, guys, don't lie. I'm not the <laughs> only one. But there's so much more to the story. And I really appreciate you being so honest and sharing that because there are people that are going through something similar or who are going to go through something similar and, you know, hopefully they'll heed our warnings, but it's important to know that wherever you are right now is not your permanent place. One of my friends says, um, and I used this line in my book, but she said, God's not going to drop me off here. Like this isn't the end for me, you know? And, um, that. it's really important for us to know that in, in, in our lowest moments, in the times where we feel so alone. And even as our lives 
improve and get better, there's still challenges. There's still sometimes where your past comes back to haunt you or, you know, you experience feelings that you did in the past and you have to reprocess them. Right. So, um, there, you know, there's, there's so much, there's so much. And I also really love one of the things that I love about you so much. And one of the reasons I wanted to interview you is because you really have brought your personality and your family and who you are into your business, into your online presence. Could you talk to us a little bit about that? Was it always that way? Um, why do you do that? Like, just talk mm -hmm. us through that. Sure. Um, honestly, it was not always that way. Um, I always, in the past, I think I, I was not as comfortable sharing the authentic version of me, um, I would say. And, and some of that is, I mean, part of like my own podcast, Soul Inspiring Business was born from wanting people to kind of get more of like, this, how do you link spiritual and business and how are those kind of things linked, which I would never have talked about those things before, because I felt like you didn't talk about those things. Like you didn't talk yeah. about the spiritual, the God, you know, I don't, now I'm very open about my faith and, um, and about God and, and calling that out, you know? Um, so, but interestingly, it was, it stems back to, and I know, you know, um, this is a coaching podcast, right? So it starts from actually me hiring a coach and I was in, so I was, so real estate career wise, right? So I, um, was working with a builder four to 08, then 08 to about 14, 2014, 15, I was building my own team. Then in 2015, my broker long and foster had asked me to lead several of their you know, real estate offices. So then I went on to lead um, several offices in, throughout the DC area and worked with hundreds of agents and was coaching them really. Um, and in that time, I felt, um, again, I went from in the beginning of the story talking about not working for a company, right? And building my own destiny. Well, I kind of felt like I wanted to, when I was starting my family, that it would give me more security to work for a company. Um, and they were amazing. And I loved that opportunity. I loved being able to lead. And I kind of went into it with the understanding that I wanted to help change people's lives. I wanted to help um, them create freedom for their lives by becoming a real estate agent and, and building their own businesses. And I was really passionate about helping people see their business differently and take it to a next level vision. Um, but what I realized in that time, so like 15 to about, or four, 2014 to about 2019, um, I missed the entrepreneurial journey. Like I missed creating my own business. And mm. so while I loved being able to help other people with theirs, I felt this longing to kind of go back into that world. And I didn't really know how unhappy I was until I would come home to my husband and finally he'd look at me and be like, why don't you make a change? You know, like you can make a change. You don't have to keep in this, you know, because I felt like there was, um, um, yeah, there were just things that weren't working for me. And um, yeah. so I hired a business coach and in that work, she's was really big on like aligning soul alignment, like bringing in your, the way that you are naturally in the world and then bringing that into your business because we're not all one size fits all. Like, yeah, you know, my, my big things for me are, and, and this is where I really lean into these things from even a marketing perspective or how I'm building my business. Uh, my core values are making people's dreams come true and um, deepening intimate connections. And hmm. so like, those two things are the things that I go all in on in my business because they're just what I love. It's who I am naturally in the world. And yeah. so then business is easier. It happens with more ease when I'm really leaning into my own gifts. Um, yeah. And so I would say like those, so the decision to become more vulnerable, to become more authentic, to really, you know, yes, maybe there are people that, 
don't connect with me because I'm being more open about certain things. And that's okay because there's a lot of people that will, and then the right people come through, right? So the people that I'm meant to connect with will resonate with that on, on some level. And then you'll just attract more of your soul aligned people, you know, which, which I feel like when you're aligned with your gifts, when you're sharing those in the world, that's, and you don't have to be everything to everybody. You know, you can, um, I consciously actually every morning just wake up saying like, I naturally attract my soul aligned tribe, like my soul aligned people to me and the clients that I work with appreciate and value my work. And, you know, cause then you get the right people to you. Yeah. I love that. And I think this is such an important conversation for our audience on the podcast because so many of the people who listen to this podcast are either thinking about entrepreneurship or coaching specifically, or they're, they're starting out, they're in it, or they're, you know, they've been in it for a year or a few years. And, you know, I think so many people, I hear this from our students in IGC all the time that they want to be more open. They want to be more of who they actually are, but there's a lot of fears that come up with that. So I'm curious, it, you know, it sounds like you made a really conscious decision after doing a lot of personal work and understanding what your values were and then how those translated to how you market yourself and how you show up. But how has being open about your life and your faith, how, how have those things changed your business? Um, honestly, I think that it has... Um... I mean, it's really increased my, I don't, some of it is like, I don't know if it's that it's like the mindset shift that I went through. Right. So like I made a conscious decision to just be more open, Uh, honestly, like I would have never shared the driven, being driven home in a police officer, like by a police officer. I wouldn't have shared that before because I would have guarded that. Now I just feel like it's part of the story. I'm not embarrassed by it. It's part of my past. Everybody has a past. And I share it because I want people to understand that no matter where you are, it can be different. Like your con, whatever you're choosing right now, like you're choosing what it is you're in right now. And in every moment, you can make a different choice. And so you can choose differently. And the past does not define you, it refines you. And yeah. so I think that um, for me, I've noticed that I, have more speaking engagements now. Like, you know, I'm approached to speak at conferences um, because I'm be- I'm more willing to just be more vulnerable and more open and people connect with that. I think through COVID, I think what we realized is the power of connection mm-hmm. and especially, you know, service businesses, like those aren't going away. And in fact, I think people are craving connection <clears throat> excuse me, I think people are craving connection even more yeah. after that. Yeah. Um, and so I think that, you know, opening up to, I mean, there's a, I guess there is a fine balance between oversharing too, right? Um, sure. But I think it gives, I, I think people want to know that they're working with a real human that has real challenges, that has a real life. And um, I think that, it's about like the the learning the overall human the overall brand the overall person you're working with and so that's why i do incorporate my family my faith my you know um and i don't think that everybody has to think exactly like me but i think that you know just being open and sharing it can also give other people permission to open up and share more of who they are yeah um, And I think that that's, you know, my business has really been transformed as a result of that decision. Yeah. It's funny because I'm just like thinking as you're talking and I'm like, I respect her more for like telling us that, right? Because I actually didn't know that. And you and I went pretty deep like the first time we even hung out. And we have a, a lot, you know, in common, both in terms of life experiences and also how we see the world and how we've made sense of our life experiences. But Um, you know, for me, it's like when I learn certain things about people, 
I think it's this mix of like, and my business partner, Liv, and I did this whole episode previously on like being too sloppy because you just brought that up, right? Like how much is too much and like oversharing and like what really gets me is like when people are um, like they're they're like overly open about like how they're feeling that exact day and it's like an ongoing thing and it's like, no, like this is not the point of this platform, you know? And then people will say like, well, why am I not getting clients or why is my business not growing? And it's like, you look so sloppy online, right? Yeah. So it, there really is an art to sharing the things, the experiences of our lives and then also showing up as a professional. Like, yeah. Cause like, you're not still the girl in the cop car. That's just a piece of, you know, that's helped contribute to who you are. What I interpret that as is like, I'm like, oh, this woman, like she's been there. She gets it. You know, real estate is really vulnerable. We don't think that it is, but as soon as you've been through a few real estate transactions yourself, you know, or if you're a real estate agent, obviously you know this, but you know, your real estate agent like learns a lot about you. And, you know, sometimes it gets really stressful and you're making a huge purchase and you might, you know, people like lose their cool a little bit. Right. So if I know that you've been through a lot in your life, I'm going to trust you more because I'm going to say, I can be myself with her and she'll be able to handle it. And I'm not going to have to hide. I'm not going to have to, you know, only share part of, of what I'm looking for. I can be really honest with this person. And so I, I do think that like honesty begets honesty. And when you show up as a more honest person with a more full picture of your life, then that's where like people really trust you and they understand you. Yeah. Well, and it's funny. One of the things that you just brought up made me think of the the book, The Four Agreements. Have you read that yep. book? Yeah. And like not taking anything personally. Yeah. Um, and so one of the things that I think just in general as business owners, as just people in the world, right, we have to kind of not, and that lesson of not taking anything personally goes both it goes both to positive and negative, right? So it's like when somebody says, oh, wow, like you are amazing. Like you're so beautiful. You're blah, blah, blah. Like don't take that personally, right? Because that's that's own where like that would be a natural thing our ego would like, you know, glob gravitate onto. towards or glob yeah. onto, right? By the same token, if somebody says, gosh, you're like sloppy, like you're this, you're that, don't take that personally either, right? So it's, it's about um, like, you just mentioned like high intensity, I'm sure as a coach as well, there's, you get into very vulnerable states with people and, you know, it's important, I think as, as friends and coaches and that we don't take anything too personally, because whatever that has been is coming at you is coming at you from the lens of what's going on with that other person. So I try to kind of like take a step back. Now, granted, you know, you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you're being constantly abused. That's just a good boundary. But at the same time, like it's a, it's a lesson in like whatever they're going through. Like, I'm not going to internalize that as mine right now. You know, yeah. I'm just going to let them be. <laughs> so yeah, I hear you. We can't, we can't make, um, what other people say about us. You know, we, we can't accept it as truth necessarily, right? Sometimes feedback is valuable and helpful and sometimes it's just not. Right. Yeah. And I think also like knowing the balance, I think, as we were also talking about earlier in terms of like sharing and oversharing, whatever. But I think some of that is not being a victim, right? So like my biggest trigger yeah. is when I see people that continually say the same thing and then aren't willing to make a change or see the growth or being open to like, how do I make things different? So, um, and maybe some of that is cause I was in that role for some time, you know, we all go through our own, mm -hmm. um, roles, but, but trying to take every experience and not being a victim from it, but allowing it to propel you into a next phase. Well, I totally agree with you and I have the same trigger, but like one of my things you know, has over the years has been like, this is so boring. Like with myself, I'm like, 
Katie, this is so boring. Like, okay, you don't like X, Y, Z. Like, who cares? No one cares except for you. No one's going to change it except for you. And like, honestly, this story is so boring. Like, just change it, right? And we have to sort of starve out whatever we're getting from complaining and whatever we're getting from hearing ourselves. You know, I, I do think that like one of my gifts in a way is being impatient and just getting to that point where like enough is enough, I think sometimes a lot more quickly than other people. Mm -hmm. So then when I see other people on the same hamster wheel, month after month, year after year, whatever, I'm like, this is so boring. I can't. (laughs) (laughs) Like, come on, just get on with it. (laughs) Like, Aren't you bored? And I really think that's like a helpful thing because, you know, our problems feel really real when we're stuck in them. And being stuck, I think, is one of the worst feelings in the world. But, you know, and we do sometimes feel like a victim. Like, I was a victim. You were a victim, like, you know, of of abuse, of, you know, I was a victim of, like, illness. You know, we've all had, like, many things that we've gone through and we could claim that identity. But mm-hmm. it's, like, not that helpful of an identity. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, I don't identify as like an abused woman. Like I, I just went through a time where that was my story and then I was able to choose out of it, you know? Right. So, yeah. But you still can say, like, you can still claim that as part of your experience. You don't, you, you're sure. not denying it, oh, but no. you're not living in it. Right. And some people live in their trauma forever. And, you know, I think that's super unfortunate and I don't think it's necessarily people's faults all the time. I mean, there's a lot that happens like, you know, where our brains truly cannot rewire and get out of the, the neural pathways that we're in. But there's a lot of technology now that can help, you know, whether it's medication or other types of healing and Mm -hmm. obviously therapy and different types of therapy and EMDR and all of these things that help us rewire how our brain functions. So, you know, I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to get back to a business question. Sure. A little bit again, like give us the before and after, but you year one in real estate was what year? 2004. 2004. Okay. And then now we're at, what'd you say? Year 20. Well, see, I could do the math, but ni- well, how many? <laughs> I think it's like 19 because we're going into 23. I think it's around okay, 19. Yeah. 19 years. Okay. So 19, let's just call it 20. All right. Let's use easy numbers. I know okay. you're a finance major, <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So 20 years later, like just give us a little bit of a snapshot for those of people that are on their year one. So many people year one of whatever they're doing want to give up like a million times. And even in year, you know, I'm 10 years into my business, you're 20 years into your business. Like sometimes we want to give up, but you have more experience with that feeling and you know, it's like short, you know, it can be a temporary thing if we let it be, but give us a little bit of insight, like what would you have told yourself year one? What are some of your learnings? I mean, 20 years later, I mean, you look like you're, you know, 18 years old, but it's, <laughs> hey, it's a real thing. You've been in the game for a while, girl. Right. I know. Um, you know, honestly, when I look back, the things that haven't changed are the people skills, right? Like those are always the same. It's like, how do you connect with people? How do you like there's a lot of different ways you I could take this question. Um, so I'll just like kind of mention a few things. So number one, I think like just getting really good on people. I, I think that like we are, uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, connection is really the name of the game. I think people want that. Um, and it's about like, how do you connect with somebody when you're in, when you're in the business, if you want to, compete with somebody that's been in it a long time. I mean, you do have to figure out like, what are your unique gifts and what are the, your strengths that you're going to be able to really, um, you know, that, that 
are going to separate you from maybe somebody that has been in it for longer. But I think that like, number one, it's just how that part of the business has not changed at all. Um, One thing that I think that it took me a while to learn in my business um, and now I'm much better at it is really learning how to invest in the business. Mm. That would probably be the thing that I would do differently or I would have done sooner is like hiring my first assistant sooner. Um, because I think what, what I was so afraid of was like, I mean, let's be real, like real estate is a commissioned based business. Right. And right. so like it is, it can be, if you're not, you know, having sales or you're not, you know, in like, it can be really stressful. Um, But I think learning how to just figure like hustle, if you need to hustle, like knowing how to do that, but then once and investing your money back in the business versus spending it on other things, because that I think is really the key to growth. You Mm -hmm. can't be everything to everybody. So for me, um, like knowing what things I'm really strong at and then what things I need to outsource have been really huge for me. Mm -hmm. Um, And yes, your business, thinking of expenses as investments. I think that mindset shift was really, really huge because for me, I was always like, oh, I can't spend money on that. Like I can't spend money on that. But like if you could invest $10 and make 20, like wouldn't you do that all day long? And that's where investing in the right things in your business can yeah. really increase that pa- or or accelerate your path. Um, I think that's the the biggest key to my growth has been that mindset shift. Yeah, I love that. So investing back into the business, knowing yourself and knowing what your strengths are. And people are number one, like making sure you treat people the right way. I see a lot of people in their first year or so of business, like getting like a little cocky and like a little like snobby about what they're willing to put up with and like how I should be treated as a business owner. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And I think where people get it twisted is like, they really, they they are like, I'm going to be my own boss. And it's like, Mm, no, your clients are still your boss. Like, you know, and of course I'm all for attracting the most aligned clients possible and there's boundaries and, you know, we have long contract, like, you know, we have standard, you know, community standards and like how you have to show up and I'm all for that. But I also think that some people get a little bit like, oh, that work is beneath me. And it's like, no, like you're 20, you're going to be doing work that you don't necessarily want to do, but it's part of what makes the machine work. And you do it, you almost like fall in love with it because you realize it makes the machine work. I mean, I was like, you know, had a leaf blower at like a photography session not that long ago. Like, you know, I mean, you just have to love what you do and then you go all in on it. So like, just because, I mean, I make it sound like sometimes because I do, I trust that the business just flows and like I attract in the right clients. And that has kind of always been the case. I mean, I used to, um, back when I was just starting out, I used a lot of visualization techniques too. So like I used to envision my model home as a lighthouse. And like this pillar of light that would just attract people in. And I mean, I was one of the number one people for our builder, like the salespeople. And I don't know, was it that? I don't know. It was a lot of different, (laughs) right? Um, It was, it was knowing and trusting that I was always provided for. Um, And excuse me, and that God would bring the right people to me. But it was also, as you said, like doing the work. I mean, I was not, I'm ne- I've never been afraid of work. Um, yeah. I still work a lot of hours. You know, sometimes when I put the kids to bed, I'll be up until midnight. I have coaching calls um, with my business coach who's in Australia, you know, at from nine to 1030 at night, you know? So it's not like I'm not doing the work. It's just that it feels more fulfilling because I know that I'm in my in my work. I'm in the work that I was called here to do. Well, and Um, I feel like you've really found a way, Kara, to infuse yourself into your business. Like, mm -hmm. 
like your business is very infused by your personality, your faith, your energy, your values. Like to me, that's like the through line of all of it. And you said this a little while ago, but you talked about being in real estate for a period of time and then thinking about going back to school, taking some social work classes. I think that's important too. Like, you know, we can change careers. We can keep our, you know, our job job and start something on the side. Mm -hmm. We can invest ourselves through a nonprofit. And, you know, I, one of the very first exercises I do with clients is like a needs chart and helping them distinguish what are all the things that they need to feel the way that they want to feel and to operate how they want to operate in the world. There's so many things that I do professionally, both through IGC, right? So I've got the company, we've got the podcast, but then there's so much that I do outside of IGC as well. And all of those things contribute to my identity, ways that I contribute to our family business, ways that I contribute and lead through Bo's effort. You know, I'm involved in the hospital. Like there's so many different things that I do and I can only give a piece of myself to all of those things. And some, you know, the pie has to shift all the time of how it's laid out, but I need that. Like, and I, I will never expect in the past I would have, but since I've done all the work that I've done as a coach and training to become a coach, you know, 10 years ago, I would never expect to get all of those needs met in one place. Just Mm -hmm. like I would never expect all my emotional needs to get met through my husband or do you know what I mean? Like that's why I have a family and friends and mentors and colleagues and my friends and I, we call it our love tank. Like, you know, figuring out like, how do you fill up the love tank? And that's not going to be from one person or one thing, you know? So, um, I mean, quite frankly, like that's how my podcast came about too, just because I wanted to be able to share and like connect with other entrepreneurs, not just real estate. Um, and you know, and that is just a passion project that I just love doing. Right. And it fills a piece of me and yes, it's additional work, but I love it. So I do it. And it's another piece where I get to share and impact the world. Just like you're saying, you know, so many of the things that you do and and the charity work and, you know, helping with your family, they're all pieces and extensions of ourselves that we get to, to figure out like what's going to fill my love tank? Like what's going to help me be the best version of me. And in turn, what's also going to create big impact for others because it's a it's a balance of like how do I live my best life and then also impact and create big impact for others too, which has always been like so important to me and I know is important to you and the work that you do as well. Yeah, and it helps also keep you committed, right? Like if you yes. are expecting real estate to give you all of the, you know, to fill your love cup all the time, like well, when you have a shit day, what do you do with that, right? Right. But you can turn around and kind of regenerate your being. I I call it like back to being, you know, what are the things that get us back to being who we are at the core? And, you know, whether it's family, sometimes it's the business, it's the podcast, it's all the ways that we contribute. And we know like that's the medicine, that's the anecdote, that's the thing that solves, you know, me feeling out of whack. It's like, a spiritual chiropractor, right? Getting us lined up again. Exactly. Exactly. I love that. Um, Okay. Well, I'm so, so grateful that you were on my show, our show, and I really appreciate everything you've shared. You've shared a lot of advice and a lot of nuggets, and I know that our audience is going to love this so much. Can you tell us where can we find you Where can we hang out with you on the interwebs? All that good stuff. Yes. Well, thank you so much. I have just so enjoyed this and I love you and your work. And so it's really an honor to be here with you and your listeners. Um, So uh, you can find me at, let's see, Instagram. It's Kara, K-A-R-A, Chafin, C-H-A-F-F-I-N, Donna Frio, D-O-N-O-F-R-I-O. Such a mouthful. Kara Chafin, (laughs) Donna Frio. Um, So you can find me there. 
Uh, the podcast is Soul Inspiring Business Podcast. So you can head over to Apple or Spotify. We're on basically all the places where podcasts are. Um, and then also I have a little free gift for your listeners as well. If they just go to www.freegiftfromkara, that's Kara with a K, um, dot com. And that's a dynamic life journal that I put together that has some of my favorite affirmations. So affirmations that I use um, in part of my morning practice every morning. Um, and it's just a place to kind of dream, like a dreaming journal about what do you want to create for the next, you know, one year, five years, 10 years? What do you want your life to look like? Because mm -hmm. getting really clear on, um, like, you've really got to sit and spend time with, your, with yourself. I'm actually going on a little mini retreat tomorrow um, to a spa and going to kind of have a little day to dream about my next vision. Mm. Um, but I think it's really important that we spend time figuring out what does that vision look like? If we could just wave a magic wand, how do we see our business? How do we see our family? How do we see, you know, our friendships? And it's just a good kind of thing to do every once in a while to just see where you're on track and where things could maybe get a little better. I love that. Yeah. It's like a little spring cleaning for your soul. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> a soul um, retreat. Right. Well, thank you so much for joining us and we will put um, your Instagram and your free gift in the show notes so you guys can find it there. And you're such a joy, Kara. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.